Sometimes box cutter can feel a little bit like a honeymoon where you first get in and you begin cutting and everything's so performant, so fast, and so nice and nimble. However, as you begin adding more cuts, it begins getting heavier on the system. And this is something that we've been aware of since the 2.8 inception, some of the changes that have come with Blender. Um, while most of them unlock more potential for us, some of them do cause a little bit of performance hang when it comes to the way that modifiers are evaluated. So right now I'm able to cut everything still very real time and very responsive. However, watch me um, add a mirror modifier using Alt X from Hard Ops and we mirror it to the X side and then we mirror it to the Y side and then we try to do some cuts again. And we can see that everything is still fairly fast. I'm able to press G, grab the shape and move it. We'll try another cut and everything's so good. So far, so good. So let's now up the ante. So a common thing you'll see me do in tutorials is I will use hard ops and just add a bevel to a shape. You know, we'll dial that bevel back and then I will hit it with a weighted normal. And this will get me much better shading. However, this comes at the cost of a lot of performance. You know, once you begin cutting into a shape that's already beveled and a weighted normals in place, it, it is something that the PC will have to evaluate. And you can see through this extrusion that's happening while I'm talking that the performance hit was quite intense. And this is something that we get quite a few emails about. And one of the things that I wanted to address for this version. And one of the things that was determined is that live mode is indeed a luxury on the evaluation speed of your computer and how well things perform whenever your computer is set up with optimal conditions. However, with Blender being in open source software, that's a work in progress. I mean, 2.8 is still being heavily configured. Um, live mode is your backup, and this will actually make box cutter perform, perform kind of the way it did back in the 2.7 uh, days where you would draw a shape, you would set your shape up, and then when you click to apply, everything would go through. And this way is not, you know, the most luxurious way, but the shadow penetrative shading should actually make it a little easier for you. Right now I'm in H wireframe mode, so you can't really see. So if you press H again, you can now see me in solid mode and the amount that I'm cutting into the shape is actually showing visually. And this is something that we wanted to add for this particular version to begin at least making optimizations to help users. If the mesh were live, you really wouldn't be able to uh, enjoy the, the benefit of this solid shaded view very much, but it is a nice visual way to let you know exactly how much you're cutting so that way you can make informed decisions when it comes to managing your mesh in these performance heavy times. In fact, we can look at this from the front and I will just draw an end gun and usually that first maneuver can be a little bit of a hit, which is something I still argue about even at this time internally, like, hey, isn't there a little bit of a speed hit we can do something about? I will just draw an end gun and we will just extrude it. And while it's a little hard to read due to the live of uh, the lack of live interaction, we are able to get a fairly good estimate just kind of looking at the side here on how deep we are cutting in. And to you know make it a little more interesting, we'll press T, just add a little bit of thickness, maybe even go inside the um, control D and just adjust how much thickness we're actually giving this. So I can actually select this parameter and choose divide by two. And even though we're in the middle of this modifier, we still have speed, speed and performance to us, even though we've had to sacrifice the behavior of live. So by clicking to apply, it will take its moment. And you, you can see that the offshoot, I mean that the, um, the pressure of the performance hangs have been offset to the uh, apply process. So we will just scroll back, get our right shape and just move it forward. And we can see exactly how much performance hit is being taken just by us moving this shape. We're not able to be as fast as we were before, but we are able to continue working. And for me, that is what performance mode is all about. In fact, as I look at this, it makes me want to select these two elements, put a point between them using subdivide, and then press J to lightning bolt. And that should actually help fix this area. In fact, if we mod scroll backwards, for me, mod scrolling backwards is just going under mod scroll and just rolling the wheel back once and clicking, which will always get you your last cutter. 
and we just move it slightly and we're back on track. And then of course we mirror it to the other side like we did previously, like so. But as you can see, we're able to continue working without having to uh, completely disrupt our workflow. So even when the going gets tough, live mode is there for you in order to pause and unpause as life demands.